all set on that side. so proud of his progress and am just every time I see him am amazed at just his attitude and determination and big shout out to Abby his physical therapist that's been working with him and been doing great with him so we will keep just following up with him just as he meets his milestones as he needs adjustments because he's bilateral uh, there's upper extremity involvement that adhered scar tissue all those things can just make using prosthetics just a little bit trickier and so continue to join me as we continue just to follow up with his care as he continues to just strive forward and reach his goals and this week, we also followed up with uh, one of our other trans femme patients, and he's been doing really well, been able to have the prosthesis on longer, walk further with the prosthesis. He's really anxious to ditch the walker. So that is one thing they tried while I was there, seeing how he would do with trying to take a first step with a cane. Super proud of him. I don't think he's quite there. We did leave him though with exercises that he can be doing to get there. And talking about first steps, guess who else had some first steps this week? My youngest, she's about 18, 19 months and just finally took her first solo steps. So in last week's stories from the field, we had talked about a new trans femme patient and looked at some at his residual limb and his cast. And so we're going to look at how those wounds are healing this week and then also fit his check socket. And here he is taking his first steps. We didn't have a lot of adjustments to the socket, mainly just marked areas couple areas on the socket where there wasn't where he wasn't getting contact and we will be seeing him next time to fit and deliver his definitive prosthesis. This is part three of our journey of following one of my transfemoral patients, clients, uh, from start to finish. So if you haven't seen it yet, I'll link it below, but we have already completed her initial evaluation and the casting and setting up the cast for scanning and got that sent off. And this is what comes back to us. So this is our 3D printed check socket. The first thing I just kind of take an overall glance at everything. We're making sure there's no rough edges. Looking at the seat and looking at the seat will be heating and bringing that out a little bit more so it's not cupping in. <laughs>
we also might be, it looks like where her adductors are might have to get adjusted a little bit. Might be coming away from the body too much and may have to raise that up a little bit as well. But we'll look at that more when we actually have it on the patient. To set this up, it's really easy. Just throw a grace plate in there so we can attach it to our rotatable female. And so we're just gonna attach this to our stomper. And let's go fit a leg. She is about in tears. This is the one that she's had, still has a wound opening. Her physician told her she can have nothing on that leg and cannot use a prosthesis until it completely heals. So we will be having a little conversation with the physician, tactfully, of course, and be like, hey, yes, is this an issue? Yes. Is it, it makes it a little bit more complicated? Yes. Should it stop her from using a prosthesis? No. I mean, it could be six years before she heals. If there's tunneling, oftentimes it's osteomyelitis, takes a long time to heal. And even when it does, it usually pops up again somewhere else. It's just part of what you manage, but it's not a reason in itself to completely hold off any sort of prosthetic care. This is a younger woman who is so fed up with being in her wheelchair all the time and just wants to be able to effectively clean her house. She has a new granddaughter coming in a few months and they don't have a ramp for her wheelchair and she really wants to be able to just walk up the steps and meet her granddaughter. We've had a patient in the past that had similar thing, tunneling, sinus tract, it was osteomyelitis and for years was not able to get a prosthesis. We put them on a prosthesis and was that sinus tract still there? Was the osteomyelitis still there? Yes, you know, would heal at some point, open up somewhere else. But in that time, even though that was part of it to be managed, he was able to be up and walking. There's so many benefits to being up and standing not just physical health, but also mental health, emotional health. We talked about that in one of our other videos when it comes to depression and anxiety associated with limb loss. And this is all tied into that. So she has another follow-up with the doctor next Tuesday. And we'll use this as an opportunity to build that relationship with that physician. We are the experts when it comes to prosthetics. And I deeply care for my patients and I am going to make sure that they get cared for. So that is this week's stories from the field. Let me know if you have any questions and you guys have a wonderful day.